Welcome to the fourth meeting of the year. Today is August 5th, 2024. Melissa, can you please read the presiding notes? In compliance with Chapter 231 of Public Law 1975, notice of this meeting, notice of this special meeting to be held at the Criminal Justice Building, 61 Main Street, South River, has been published in the Homeless Tribune on July 10, 2024. Post on the Building Bulletin Board, the borough website, the front door of the Criminal Justice Building, and 61 Main Street, South River. Roll call. Mayor Beebe? Here. Council Dallas? Here. 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 Since our last council meeting, uh, one of our councilmen, John Frost, has stepped down. So since then, three names have been brought to the council. And uh, we will be uh, making a nomination for one of those three names. Uh, the three names are Matt, Nick, and James. Uh, so do we have a nomination for the three other names? I'd like to make a motion to nominate Matt DeSantis. Second. Motion has been made by Councilman Seal, uh, seconded by Councilwoman Ballas. Do we have a nomination? Roll call. In resolution 2024, which includes the Council Councilman Ballas? Yes. Councilman Seal? Yes. Councilman Virginia? Yes. Councilman Yes. Congratulations. Yes. I say your name. I Matt DeSantis. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support that I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. That I will bear true faith. And I will bear true faith and allegiance and allegiance to the same and to the governments established in the United States. To the same and to the governments established in the United States. In the state, in this state, in this state, under the authority of the people, under the authority of the people, that I will faithfully, that I will faithfully, impartially, impartially, and justly perform, and justly perform all the duties of all the duties of the borough of South River Council member, the borough of South River Council member, according to the best of my abilities. I'll do the best of my abilities. So I'll be back. Congratulations. Congratulations, Councilman DeSantis. If you would like to say a few words. Uh, yeah, I would just like to say that I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity. Uh, born and raised in South River. My wife, Jill, and I have chosen to raise our three daughters, Molly, Ella, and Maddie here. Um, I'm very respectful and appreciative of the history and tradition of our town. But I also want to be a part of planning as we move forward, revitalization and progress. Um, I've been a big part of the youth in the town for a long time, mainly through athletics and coaching, but I want to be up here now to make a different difference, as I've been saying, and I plan to speak for the people and do what's right for the borough and put them first every day, so thank you. Thank you. Sir. 
this uh, executive session 2024 249 so everyone understands we are going to go into executive session after we, re we return we will proceed with the rest of our agenda so listen Seconded by Councilwoman Ballas. sessions. Uh, first session is going to be about speed bumps or in that case speed humps. Um, Mr. Deputy Chief. Union Mayor, members of the Borough Council, and uh, residents of the Borough of South Bergen. I apologize that I don't have my Google shirt on tonight. <laughs> Um, I was told late by Councilman Seawood that that was a matter of question. Um, so with regards to speed humps, uh, in 2023, the state of New Jersey revised New Jersey statute and annotated 3949, excuse me, 489, 810, and 811, which define and govern traffic calming measures inclusive of the use of speed humps. The state defined the speed hump as one of several traffic calming measures for which the forces of vertical acceleration to discourage people from speeding. For purposes of this chapter, speed humps means all vertical speed deflectors, including but not limited to speed tables, raised crosswalks, raised intersections, and modified speed humps. And this is the part that impacts the borough. Furthermore, the state of New Jersey has transferred the authority of the approval and construction of speed humps to the local municipality for one and two-way roads with a speed limit of 35 miles per hour and with fewer than 3,000 vehicles traveled daily. This legislation does not extend to Middle Six County roads such as Route 535 Main Street, Route 677 Wendell Avenue, 527 Olders Turnpike and the like. So um, pretty much everyone in the room is aware of the fact that speeding in town, pretty much everywhere I would say in the United States, um, is an issue. Um, speed humps, uh, we have not looked into what the impact is going to be with regards to liability if it causes a motor vehicle accident. The liability on the road, we would have no idea. So let's say we implement the use of a speed hump as a motor vehicle accident because the borough put that in is that a liability that comes back. We do not know how that's going to impact um, Mr. Soares and his plows in the winter time. We don't know how it's going to impact uh, fire trucks, etc. Um, I can tell you that um, the roads that we're probably all thinking of, such as Cam Avenue, uh, Leonard King Avenue, those are probably good locations for these. But again, there's got to be much more done looking at these things. Uh, we would have to conduct studies, uh, depending on what the pleasure of the mayor or council is, where you want to target these. Um, they probably will slow down speeding vehicles, obviously, because you're going to ask the brake if you hit this at a lower, uh, uh, lower car, you're going to like a Corvette or something like that, you're going to wipe out the suspension. So I don't know if that's a liability for the borough or not, I have no idea to answer that question. Um, we, would have to, we would have to perform studies to even see what we can put these on. Um, other traffic coming measures are paint. Um, I know what we're looking at right now is this legislation moving forward this evening, I believe, for Virginia Street. Part of that legislation is inclusive of uh, paint, and that paint is 
psychologically slows vehicles down as traveling down the roadway, which is why we're looking at putting, putting the W online. The state law requires you to stay to the far as right as practicable. So technically on every street, there's a W line that you can't pass on residential roadways, but we're going to implement this measure. We, as a community, are going to be implementing this measure specifically on Virginia Street, um, psychologically to slow people down. It's going to make the lane too small, <coughs> so people should drive slow. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know what else Mayor you wanted me to review as far as the traffic pumps. Well, I know we had this conversation with the Chief in regards to what DOT was uh, uh, passing. This is something that the Council will have to uh, speak among each other in regards to what, what streets we want to go after, as well as speaking to our Councilor to see what kind of legalities uh, we are looking at uh, so we can move forward with uh, certain streets in our town. I know this is a major problem, especially when it comes down to uh, speeders, people are allowed to <coughs> Unfortunately, uh, we have 100 police officers, and it's going to happen in every single part of town. There's going to be speeders. Uh, we're trying to reduce the uh, impact by putting up as many cautions as we can. Uh, we will uh, speak among us, and uh, see what we can get through this. Yeah, this is this is new as of last year, so I know that a lot of communities have put those in. I don't know how uh, that approval was done, um, but this is actually new law. New legislation has changed, so it falls literally under the authority of the <coughs> Maryville Council. Right. Well, I appreciate it. Any questions for Deputy Chief? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. <laughs> Any questions from the audience? Uh, you can hold back until um, until public comment. Our next is going to be on dispensaries. Now, in the last past two meetings, we have brought up the concept of dispensaries. Uh, unfortunately, due to quite a few questions among the council, as well as the residents, uh, there, were, there were quite a few, um, I guess you could say we were not sure in what direction we wanted to go with. In the last past meeting, we spoke about how the referendum uh, died last year in regards of having a dispensary in our town. The number last year was 1337 that all said no, and, and sorry, said no, and 1126 actually said yes. We basically missed it by 200. But what I learned is with the people that said no, rightfully so, were you saying no to exactly what is it about? What kind of security do you have? Where is it going to be located? Uh, the impact it's going to have on the residents? Uh, is there going to be any uh, unwanted element? I understand. Believe me, I understand that. But in regards to the word yes, once again, what were you saying yes to? Were you saying yes to the word knowledge? Were you saying yes to the tax impact that could come to your town? Or were you saying yes to what you thought could come and actually benefit the town? Unfortunately, we can never give this answer the proper way. But what I did was I reached out to the state to talk to them about it. And what I learned was in 2020, they actually had a referendum to the whole entire state. Surprisingly, South River, when they voted no, it was 2,158. That same year, that same referendum, they voted yes, 3,758. They won by 1,600 votes. <clears throat> now that referendum was very well spoken. It covered every possible avenue from dispensaries to manufacturing, to cultivating, to transporting, to you name it, anything to do with the cannabis industry. The referendum from last year, unfortunately, wasn't self-explanatory. And I don't blame the people for saying no. Since then, I've spoken to quite a few professionals, and I've had one actually come here today to give us a education on what dispensaries are, whether it's a good thing or if it's a bad thing. <coughs> it's not me to say that the council knows more about it, and at that same time, what the residents should really know about it. So there's quite a few facts that I've learned in the last past two months. One of them was 80% of what's actually sold at these referents at these dispensaries are all edible stuff. Very, very educational, uh, including the age limit. Averaging from 55 to 75 years old. Wasn't, I was surprised to hear this. Well, I'd rather leave it to the professionals actually <coughs> speak about it. So, Mr. Uh, 
self-contained little safety places, as it were. Let me give you an example. A dispensary is, you can only go in one way, and you can only come out one way. You are, when you first enter, you're in a, a lobby type area where you are checked, your credentials are checked. You have to be 21 to come in. It's not like a bar where there's a restaurant attached, where minors can come in, and some of them meander towards the bar area. Not the same. You have to be 21, you have to prove you're 21. The people that work at the dispensaries have to be certified by the state. They need to have a clean, a clean record. They have to be vetted by the state. The state has to renew licenses every single year. They audit places randomly. So far, we haven't had many problems throughout the state. But what you need to know is that it's when people come in to purchase, they already know what they want. They have ordered online or by a telephone call, and they are directed to a place, and then their exit place, the dispensary. Meaning, we know they are present in the dispensary, a total I we're taking the same <coughs> of eight minutes. Eight minutes. As the mayor said, he's correct with the stats. The people that are purchasing are 55 to 75. People are purchasing mostly edibles. And they're purchasing them for stress relief, for calming, for meditation, believe it or not. The strains that have been developed by manufacturers are extremely impressive when it comes to non-drug-related anti-Xanax type of treatments. People are using them and they've been successful. So far, that's what we see. So the facility itself is targeted for a non-high volume, as far as traffic portion of your town. It is mostly in industrial places. Uh, by statute, you will be receiving 2% of revenue from the place which goes directly to the township. The area where it is, the deliveries come in one way, and the trucks leave the same way they come. It's extremely regimented, it's extremely organized, and it's very, very safe. There are security guards in most places. The state has required it first. Some places have decided they don't really need them because people are coming in, purchasing, and leaving. Um, there are various products that are offered. Like I said, different types of <coughs> ailments, different types of pleasure. Now, you can't drive or use product. It's a 
to DWI. It's actually called a DUI, <coughs> driving under the influence. You can't absorb the substance and drive. You cannot be under the influence at all. So you can't, if you decide to smoke, which most people don't, you can't smoke it like a cigarette out of your window as you drive. That's against the law. You cannot consume these products in a public place. So for instance, unlike other places where you can have a sample of something, try it to see if you like it. No, no, not permitted. You can purchase something, take it home, consume it, and decide if you want to take it. We've had very few problems, health problems, reported by people throughout the state. Um, no overdoses, no, um, no, no, nothing reported as to uh, people misusing products. Again, you're talking about mostly a mature part of the population. This is not the 1960s or 70s where people are buying stuff and they're smoking and they're getting high on the street or something. It's, it's totally different. Think of the time when we first, in this country, first approved after prohibition alcohol. It has to be certified. It has to be uh, a certain quality. The contents are scrutinized of each product. When you buy something from a dispensary, you're getting exactly, precisely what you buy. And it's, it's actually pretty phenomenal because it comes from a natural substance. And many natural substances can't be <coughs> assayed to be a, per, a, a particular purity. But these products have that purity in them. It's absolutely amazing. The, the amount you can buy is limited by statute. Um, you can't have in your possession at any time, whether private or public, more than six ounces. You, uh, the, the packages, when you come out of the store, the packages are sealed, they're child-proof. They're, they're sealed and only to be used, like I said, in the private setting. So the privacy of your home, the privacy of um, a friend's home. You cannot give it to someone else unless there's a carve out in the statute unless you you give them a gift if you give a gift you cannot take money for it so i cannot give for instance a, an eighth of an ounce which is mostly what people buy to the mayor and the mayor say oh thank you let me give you the i can't take it not allowed so the the industry is so regulated and so tight that it's nearly impossible to cause a problem. And I think the reason they started this way, with the purity of the product, <coughs> the, vari the variations, um, or the diversity of the product, from stress relief to calming to um, just relaxing, is because people wanted to have a place that they can relax and de-stress. Can't take it at work, has to be again in your home or a private place. Otherwise, it's unlawful. All of these safeguards are start with the dispensary. And that's what we're here to educate um, anyone who has questions about the, uh, the length, the breadth, the, the depth of what we're doing here. But think of it as a specialty store. If anyone has ever been in an Apple store or a Verizon store, it's kind of set up like that. Whereas uh, you have products separated where you can't try them, but you can look at them in their descriptions, and then everything else is behind glass. Uh, let's talk very briefly, and then I'll go over to our forensic accountant. The, the products are, like I said, sealed and safe, but the money that comes in is cash or debit card. The cash comes in, there's enough cash to perform a transaction, now, remember, they know exactly what the transactions are because either the orders have already come in through the telephone or online, or there's only so much you can buy. So there's cash available to change, give someone change. The rest of the cash goes right down into a, which would be a, a basement area and into a safe, and it's just in there. And of course, the debit cards are electronic. That transaction is pretty seamless. So if anyone has any questions of me, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Um, Mayor, otherwise, I'll turn it over to our president. Thank you. Any questions? My turn. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Mayor, Council. I'm Nicholas Lucarell, forensic accountant. Office is located in Total, New Jersey. 
Accountants are very boring people. We deal and we talk in numbers. But I promise you, I'm not going to be boring today. We're going to talk a lot about percentages and how much money you earn in this industry, how much money that this industry generates in the state of New Jersey. And by the way, it's good to be back in South Africa. My family owned and operated a business here for 25 years. It's good to see everybody. With that being said, let's have fun with the first number. This number is not a lot of things. This is a number that we're going to entertain because we're entertaining. We all hear and talk about money. The money that I always hear and talk about on a regular basis is something called a trillion dollars, not really in this conversation. But let's wrap our arms around the trillion dollars. Anyone here, can you embrace the trillion? I know that if I have to write a check, I gotta write one. Does everybody know who the zeros are behind that? No, it takes a while to figure it out. It's 12. I gotta write a one in 12 zeros. That's a lot of zeros, that's a lot of money. Let's digress. Let me reel this in. How much money is the state of New Jersey going to generate this year by selling cameras? Well, December 2023. The monitoring system, by the way, any time that I refer to the monitoring system or the regulatory systems, they're all cannabis related. They projected in December 23 that New Jersey will sell over $1 billion in cannabis. Oop, here we go again, I'm counting the number. Uh, let's write another check. <coughs> you your arms now. I got to put one and I put nine zero. I'm starting to write. How much money is generated to our town? It's 2% of the gross profits. Not after expenses, anymore. not after we pay our rent, not after we pay our mortgage, not after we pay our fee. It's 2% of the top money. Another accounting problem. What's 2% of a billion dollars? It's 20 million. Let's write another check. A two, and now I gotta put seven zeros. Now I ran in that nick. I'm tired of talking about percentages. The question is. How much money can we generate in South Africa? <clears throat> Mr. Jameson <coughs> is the owner of High End Cannabis. It's a licensed New Jersey corporation. When I speak to you today, I do not speak to you upon hearsay. My firm has incorporated over seven dispensaries right in the state. I have a labeling company, <coughs> I also incorporate a manufacturing company, and also incorporate a growth line company. Incorporation. When I talk to you, it's not about hearsay. Perhaps you see me. I can't tell you who I see and what I see. When I can attest to the fact <coughs> that in the first quarter of 24, they exceeded the projected by 38%. 38% projected more sales than they predicted before. The question is, how do I get into this town? How do I make this town better? How do I make this town prosper? Mr. Jameson asked that to me. That's why he retained me tonight. He said, Nick, how do I show this town? How do I tell these town people that I'm coming here to do a good thing? I said, it's not that easy. First, you don't want to rent, you don't want to lease. If you want to show this town you're serious, you better tighten your shoes. You better buy something. In doing so, I highly recommend that he goes and he looks at high industrial area. Why did I say that? Because in the cannabis industry, the lion's share, if not 90% or greater, is located in high industry. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about you, but I don't want to dispense right next to my neighbor. Okay? I want them off the beaten path or somewhere where I have to travel to. I do not want anybody in my backyard in the in 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 dispensary. With that being said, I looked at your high industrial area. And now I'm thinking on behalf of the town. What's the best way to show the support of the town? And I found it. I looked at buildings that had enormous tax liabilities. I looked at buildings that haven't paid real estate tax. One building that I located, which council has pictures of, is a large building. That building owes in excess of $189,000 <coughs> in real estate tax. Mr. Jameson, who's hiding behind that door, is willing to write a check at closing to make sure that we, the people, get the $189,000.
You want to be a part of it. With that being said, that building is approximately 4,000, 5,000 square feet. Corporate America came to our state two years ago. They set a precedent for what dispensaries look like. I don't know if any of you have gone to big corporate dispensaries. It's a wow syndrome. You walk into a staging area, you give them your driver's license, you prove they're over the <coughs> they pass along, make sure you're not carrying a gun. You then walk through the next door, which is the actual dispensary. You went to the building of this door, but the dispensary is to a double door. When you open those doors up, it's like, wow, amazing. The, the way that they're showing you what the product consists of, the way that they're advertising the product, yes, it is true. A lion's share of all the orders come online. The majority of their sales come when you walk in the door. I just went to a new one in Boone Saturday. I was all entertained to do it. I do it to get paid. Remember that. Went to the store in Boone, introduced myself. As soon as I walked in the door, police officer, how are you? Went, ID, driver's license, car, walked. I walked in a hallway that had an art. I'm not talking about advertisement. I'm talking about art on the wall. I opened the double doors, and what did I say? Wow, 4,000 square feet. I can't believe this place. Beautiful lines, computers to the side for people that want to read about the product, laptops and tablets for people that want to order on site, a section in the back that had a blood tender and a council person. To tell you on what you might need and what you'd like to use. An amazing product. Now, when I'm in there, I was set on the assignment to buy three different things. This guy it was a, a flower, it was a bait, and it was a gummy. That was my assignment. My assignment was to spend $200. Cash. I walked in, I priced everything out, came to about $196. Good. I got to the desk. Check out. Gentleman said, first time here? Yes. 20% discount. I said, yeah, that's great. And why are you buying that? I said, well, it says it's calm. How calm do you want to get? I understand. I just want to go to sleep at night, but I don't want to wake up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and walk into the wall. He goes, that's the wrong stuff. You want this. By the way, that's 25% discount now. As you walk into the grand stores, yes, they make their money on wine. But they make the lion's share of revenue when they get you in there. Common sense. When we go to support our local stores, you go to buy bread, you go to some deli meat. Great place. You know the guy, you're always there. You love it. But I need milk. I need to get eggs. I gotta go to another store. The dispensers are no different than any other stores. They draw you in because that's where the specials are, that's where they're advertising new products. That's how they generate income. A store of that size in the heavy industry area that I located. On the downside, first year, a little over six million. That's $120,000 a year. Paid for the time. Most important, you're hiring approximately 20 people, which we love to keep in town because it's very valuable. And it makes common sense for us as business owners to do so. Also, we're not asking you to improve your education system. There's no education system here. There's no expenses here. We will, I speak on behalf of Pine Town. When I say we are Pine Town, we will supply our own on board. Our own law enforcement. Your average revenue on your taxes on your houses in this town, according to your 2020, 2020 survey, $7,500 per house for the West Indies there. Of which only 29% comes to you good people. Boring. It's $2,100. That's all that comes down to us, right here. All the rest goes education, law enforcement, all good things. But that's what we get $2,000. Pioneer Academy, in, in reality, just built 60 brand new homes for you and paid for them all in full. In full for the rest of the time that they're here. You will receive a minimum of $120,000 a year. I have stores. If you look at the websites, if it's public information, they're doing over 12 million a year. That's a quarter million dollars. And that's not out of the realm. 
I gave council pictures of two properties that I located at. The other property I located at was considered like a light industry. I believe that's a classification. Light industry zones in the cannabis business cause some problems from what I understand. So the property that I located happens to be the property that my family owned. Old Bridge Turnpike, I apologize. It's a smaller store. Now, in this industry, there's dispensaries and then there's boutiques dispensaries. I can tell you from what I've seen personally, boutique dispensaries do not generate the kind of thing, not even close to the big dispensary. Not even close. The building that was rendered here to give the council is maybe 800 square feet the first floor. It doesn't work. You need a 10 by 15 staging area. I'm left with 500 square feet. I got five, six people employed. What am I gonna do? Three people in a store? You're not gonna make the money. We need to have something in this town of a large size to create a great volume to generate revenue for you. The state of New Jersey is gonna pick up 6.625, another number, okay? That's on sales tax then. For us, the people here, we're interested in 2%. So the question is, is Heine Cannabis going to write this check or not? That's the question. That's up to you. We're able to do so, and we're able to do it now. I appreciate your time. By the way, is there any questions? No. And I don't want to ask anybody if they did it in this country. But if you have not, it's not illegal to walk in. Okay? Show your ID. Go. See what it consists of. One last caveat. You're not going to believe this. You might. Hate to point finger. Retired federal agent. Homeland Security. Narcotics. Customs. That's me. Look who I'm representing today. Because I know, for a fact, when you smoke or eat marijuana, there's no violent crime, people. The only thing you want to do is sit on the couch. The only thing you're going to do is you're going to go to 7-Eleven and eat too many Twizzles. Okay? <laughs> when you're going to eat a whole bowl of ice cream. You're not going to hurt people. This is not something that's going to hurt us. This is something that's going to generate income for you. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Thank everybody for your time. Anybody have a question? Yes. Where are you? Where are you? Hi. So, Hello, John. what was the uh, business that your family owned here? The business that my family owned here was a salon on the uh, Old Bridge Summit. Joe Tucci was one. 25 years. Had a great run, sold it to a doctor. That building, something happens at the dock, so a new person bought I went around, I'm gonna go. The building got tired. The guy didn't pay the taxes. The parking lot looks like, I don't have to say. It needs a lot of love. How's that? Okay, overgrown red, the inside of the building is totally destroyed. I don't know if the heat and hot water is on it, it's like two by four. But there was something to look at in the two different areas, and I didn't want to miss any of the scope so that when you have a chance to digest what I'm saying, hopefully you understand what I'm saying. And by the way, when you wouldn't have my business card, my number, if you have a question, please pick up the phone call. Once again, what I'm telling you is not hearsay. I'm telling you, I see it. I do this for a living, right? I have nine places operating right now. And there's times where I look at the numbers. And I do it for a living, and I can't believe that they're making thirty-five to fifty thousand dollars on Saturday, on Saturday, and one day. And it's true. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any questions? We're going to go into uh, first reading uh, ordinances. The new one. And you have to do. Uh, Sure. For first reading, my title only is 2024-37. That's the ordinance for the Virginia Street stop uh, stop signs um, and the recommendations for Virginia Street. 2024-38. Uh, that is just a sale of a portion of property uh, to Hamilton Street Development. Uh, it was previously authorized, but they expanded it. Um, we needed to do another ordinance. Um, 2024-39 is an ordinance to adopt amendments to uh, the Lower Main Street Redevelopment Plan. This affects uh, what's, I guess, commonly known as the Blackburn property. Thank you. 
Let's go into second reading. Uh, 2024 31, please. For this 2024 31, for the South River, kind of the state of New Jersey, authorizing the non binding referendum question between the general election ballot for 2024 relative to establishing a joint land use board. Wait before reading. Second. Motion by Council President Frenzo, second by Council Member Dallas. All in favor? Aye. 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 Discussion? I'd like to open it up to the public. Give you 10 minutes, say your name and your address. <clears throat> Going once, first call, second call. Hi, Ed Chagar, 44 Fairy Street. I think on a second reading, I'm going to order. There's no time limit. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Um, all right, so this is an ordinance to do away with the zoning board and combine everything into one land use board, correct? That's correct. Okay. So I guess my first problem, uh, first question is, what what type of problem are you trying to address? Is there a problem with having a zoning board and a separate planning board? I'm actually trying to consolidate the planning board and the zoning board. Most of our townships around here that are under 20,000 people are starting to do this wise one-stop shop. When it comes down to a developer, contractor, a homeowner that wants to do something, instead of them jumping around between different boards, they're right there in front of everybody talking to them. Not only that, they're actually saving money, as well as the town saving money. Instead of having two different boards, planning board and zoning board, and you're paying for double mayor, uh, sorry, uh, a planner, lawyer, engineer, everybody's sitting in one room. I'm basically trying to consolidate and make it easier for everybody to get everything done properly. Now, you think about this logically. And well, let me just please <clears throat> touch on a couple of things here. Are we having a problem with people jumping between the boards, like going to the planning board? There's going, oops, so it should be in the zone. There's some instances. Going to the zone board and going, oops. I mean, it's, it's my experience and my understanding that people down at board, uh, 48 Washington, they do a really good job of directing the people where to go. I mean, I've been on the zone board for eight years. I don't think I've ever had one applicant that came up and said, you know, Am I supposed to be here? So, is there really a problem with that? I mean, do we have any sort of like, you know, for a fact, like we've got five people this year that were confused and bounced back and forth? Uh, we have had a couple. I wouldn't go with this a problem. It's more about consolidating, making it easier for developers as well as homeowners. Easier for developers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Developers, uh, construction workers, people that want to come before our boards and actually do something. It's a one stop shop. One stop shop. So, it's still going to be. We're not changing the ordinances, right? The zoning laws? Or how about we're going to reduce the fees to come to this one stop shop? No, everything's How about right now you need like 16 copies of plans and everything? Are we going to reduce that? How about helping them out with escrow fees? How about helping them out with escrow fees? How about, how about helping a town with saving? But I mean, I don't see how combining the boards is going to change any of that. We're still going to have application professionals. To get together and have a meeting with the developers, and then it's a complete. You can't find I mean, that's a great company to meet both. It doesn't make any sense. We, if you wanted to streamline it, the completeness portion seems like that could be eliminated. So that the professionals help the developers and the applicants. A complete application. So we'll get stuck there. So we're not, we're not reducing the amount of reasons. There's still going to be a completeness hearing and then a hearing. Yeah, but you have one stop shop. Well, I'm going to ask you a question. Um, wait, I have to ask you this question. You, you don't have no time with it, so here's my question. Okay. Okay. Okay, here's my question. Why does it bother you so much? I just. Uh, like, what is the real reason? It seems rushed. It's not rushed, it's a referendum. Okay. It's not a referendum. All right, all right. Let me, let me just say, it was never brought up in the zoning board. Nobody there ever discussed it. I got three more meetings, three more months, I'll come to the zoning board. I'll ask It'd be too late after today. It goes on a referendum today. But anyway, today. It goes on a referendum in November. All right, but today you said it'd be the vote. That's correct. But if we miss it today, it's not getting on a referendum. That's correct. I mean, that's, is that why the meeting was changed for tonight? That's correct. I mean, normal meeting was the next week. Right. And there was a special meeting because you got to hit that meeting one day again. Like I said, we voted, advertised, and we did it next week. 
of that to happen. So this was kind of rushed through. So that type of stuff, if you followed me over the years, that sort of stuff always kind of gives me the, why are you rushing? How is the EDC, I mean, the Economic Development Commission, what is their recommendation? You never even brought it up? I never brought it up. Never brought it up at the Economic Development Commission. Never brought it up at the Zoning Board. I watched a couple of zoning board, uh, planning board meetings. I don't think it was ever discussed there. Yeah, we're doing it. We have a special meeting tonight in order to get this thing. Yeah. So that right there, to me, is a red flag. Because, you know, right, right, right near uh, the ordinance, it says that uh, we consider the feasibility of establishing the joint board, and it's the best interest of the borough. Where was that going? I mean, the council discuss that and say this is going to be great and it's in the best interest. I mean, that if I looked at the agendas, and the only time this was on was on last month's agenda, it wasn't on June's agenda, May's agenda, April's agenda, March's agenda. So when you ask why am I against this, it just kind of question. We've got something that seems to be working. Right? So why change it? Because there is a zeitgeist, there is a thing nowadays where developers have been complaining. You can see this on the internet. I've had some blowback from some decisions on the zoning board. Where they're like, oh, you know, the regulations, it's between the regulations. And my God, I can't build this huge apartment because you want me to put in parking. And oh, the meetings are going to go through. You guys should just eliminate this stuff. We could develop the heck out of that thing. So, and that's not just out there. You read about it everywhere. So I just kind of wonder if, you know, we've fallen for some bad sales pitches in the past when it comes to zoning, right? We rezoned Water Street residential. Now we got commercial properties coming into old factories. We all need variances. It's residential. Somehow we were talked into making old commercial buildings residential. Some other zoning things like that around town too. So I'm just a little bit hesitant, a little bit worried that, you know, maybe we're falling for a sales pitch. Maybe it's not like yourself. Why the rush? We could do it next year. We could talk to the zoning board, we could talk to the planning board, we could talk to the EPC. It could be discussed in the meeting. So those that, that's kind of my that's the rush. Why are we doing this? What's wrong with zoning? I mean, we can point to a few. Developments downtown. The zoning board approved the tropical development for apartments. There are a lot of weird things about it, but it's been approved. Where is it? Is it the zoning board's problem that it's not done? No. There are other projects where the zoning board and planning board has approved stuff, and we're still waiting. It's 10 years later. Is that the zoning board's problem? No, it's not. So why are we? Getting rid of this. I mean, you're looking at me kind of smiling. I'm right? smiling because I've been on the planning board since 1999. Yeah. Now, you're talking about developers. So I'll give you an example. With the consent, hopefully, with the whole entire council, we're going to be looking at the first redevelopment that's going to get approved, well, first reading today. Now, what bothers me about this is that this is something that has flopped between zoning board and planning board. So if we actually had one, so one solid board, such as land use, we probably weren't been flopping back and forth for the last past six or seven years. Well, that sounds years. like just hold, hold on. So this is where my problem is. Now, right now, you're rotating around the zoning board. You keep talking about the zoning board. You don't talk about the planning board. You talk about the zoning board. So I understand your feeling towards your board. And rightfully so. You have every right to protect them. Yeah, okay, so but well, whatever may be, I'm trying to consolidate and make it easier for everybody in this town. Well, others, see, that, that was my first thing. It's like, how is it easier? Because the, you're coming to one board. Mm -hmm. well, I understand your argument. I'm coming to one board. I'll give you an example. Well, all right. I, I'll, I'll give you an example. Hey, let, let, let's, let's just say this. <clears throat> it's one board that you appoint people to without the advice of consent of the council. Right now, the zoning board, you need a council vote to get the zoning board. The planning board, you do it alone. And that's the way this new land use board is going to be too. You're going to appoint the people alone. That's another, and it's not just you, because let's just face it, there's no sunset for you. This is forever. And your blood is going to be a different one. And we're going to be stuck with this. And we're kind of rushing through something that's going to be forever. 
And then, of course, you could probably build a zone to that. But, so, right now, I think it's kind of a nice balance. You've got the planning board, appointed by you. There's a certain group of people you want to mark. They come up with the plan. Then you've got a different group of people that has appointments by the mayor and council. They've they got a different aspect with different thoughts on who to put on it. And there's a nice balance there. And I've seen this balance. I mean, I'll give you two real world examples. We got the zoning board, which came up with the downtown redevelopment area by asking the people in town about it. I don't think the people in town really dive into it, and I don't blame them. They got families, they got careers, stuff I don't have, so I don't think this stuff. So, the planning board and the people in town said no drive throughs in town. So, when Provident wanted to put a drive through the bank, and says, good, no, I want to do that. Look at a different group of people appointed by a different group of people. They look at it and say, you know what? That wouldn't be that bad. The planning board, people in town, the master plan said, no dog groomers downtown. They had dog groomers all the time. Came before the zoning board, different group of people appointed by a different group of people that said, you know what? I don't think a dog groomer would be that bad downtown. So, you know, that's what's going on now. You get different group of people kind of looking at different stuff. Both those examples, I, I guess I would kind of wonder if the land use board said no drive throughs, why would they say, okay, you can have a drive through? I don't think they would. I think they would stick with their no drive throughs. Why, if the land use board said no dog groomers, why would they turn around and say, oh, but you can have a dog groomer? I don't think they would. They would probably stick with it. You said no, but no. <laughs> At least it's something we should be discussing with besides kind of rushing this through without talking about it. So that's where I'm at. Thank you, Mr. Barger. So there's not going to be any reduction in fees. And there's not going to be any reduction in paper. We'll probably work on trying to get it easier next time. But as of we do the work on it, but there's not. In the ordinance, in the, in the plans, there's no reduction in paper. You're still going to need to find the paper. Right? Um, you know, when you say as far as saving money, how much did we spend on wages and salaries for the zoning board in 2022? Uh, that's something I'm going to talk to uh, Mr. Knight. It was $15,085. Right? $96. That's a lot of money. And when I, had, I mean, it just makes sense that if you have two boards meeting twice a month, they're going to have one board. You're probably going to need more than twice a month. I'm not going to put anybody here on the spot. But if you guys are looking at like twice as many meetings, you're not using it for, you know, if you're like, hey, 12 meetings would cost this much. 24 meetings, ah, same with that. We're not really going to say that. Well, Mr. Schreiber, I totally understand where you're going with this, and I appreciate your help. Thank you. It's on limit, right? For you. So, are there been any, I, have, I have a question. There, have there been any forum? Have there been any forum? I have a question. Have there been any forum? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Yes, this yes, we'll end this meeting. We'll end this uh, session. Here's so, a question for you. If I wanted to paint, if I wanted to go and I wanted to build a, I wanted to put a, a door on my closet, a wooden door, and I want to paint it. So, I'm going to go to the lumber store. I'm going to buy the door, correct? Then, I'm going to go to the uh, the paint store and buy the paint, correct? Buy paint at the lumber yard. Or I could come to Trigon and buy one whole entire thing because it's one stop shop. I don't sell doors or paint. <laughs> the point is, everything would be sitting there. So you, you understand how I prove my point. So well, let the referendum vote for itself. That, that doesn't follow. Listen, that you're smiling follow. so you it's know not, that this is the same time. It's not going to be a one stop shop. The one stop shop is called 48 Washington Street. Okay. You go to 48 Washington Street and they direct you where to go. All right. Thank you. What do you mean thank you? It's unlimited. So, has there been any forum problems on the planning board? The yes, there board? has. And the zoning board hasn't had any so. Last year, you had two meetings that were canceled, correct? Excuse me? Last year, you had two meetings that were canceled, correct? Last year? Yeah, it's okay. I, I looked it into it. I don't Which expect you to remember that. Which meetings? You were one in December and one in the middle of the summer. I looked into it. It's okay. It's happened. All right, so it happened once. Twice. But Twice. the point, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And let the people vote. So let me ask you this. If the people vote no, then it's over. You can't do it? That's it. 
Can I so if somebody could decide anything, they vote no, that's it, it's going to do it anyway. Wow, that was a non binding referendum. Well, that's what this is. Isn't it? They say no, they say no. Let the people vote. All right, so. All right, so that's my concern. It's just the rush. Nobody was, there was no discussion anywhere. No zoning board, not the EPC, not the planning board, not the public. We're working fine. I don't agree with the, uh, the one stop shop. The one stop shop's called 48 Garden, 48 Washington Street. And the guys down here, as far as I can see, I mean, maybe you're saying they're a bunch of goof offs. We don't know what's going on. People are bouncing around. I don't see that. I see that they're professional. And everybody I talk to, everybody's very nice down here and directed properly. So I kind of think, you know, what's the rush? Why are we rushing? I mean, I know it's the it's the trendy thing. Let's make it easy for developers. I mean, it's pretty easy for developers now, right? I mean, if you're introducing an ordinance to allow a change the redevelopment plan, that's not in front of any zoning board or plan, but that seems pretty easy, breezy. I mean, I think the last thing we want to do is just the rubber stamp. All right, things are easy, but let's just rubber stamp stuff. So I think we should hold it off and give it some thought. What do we do next year? Anyone else from the public? Good evening, Richard Byrne, the 11th of the set place. Um, I recall when they adopted the Joint Land Use Board law, it was to solve a specific problem in smaller municipalities where you had trouble finding enough volunteers to populate two boards. So um, they adopted the law, many uh, smaller towns adopted it. And then there were larger towns that expressed an interest in doing it. And so the legislature came back and amended the law that says that larger than 15,000, you have to uh, put a referendum at the public. So um, now it, it's a non binding referendum, which means that if it passes, if the referendum passes, the borough is not obligated to actually implement the board, should you decide at that time that it's not. But uh, I'd like to thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, for bringing up that point about bouncing applications be between the boards. And uh, as a member of the planning board, we got two applications that I remember that were zoning applications that ended up having a site plan, and the other one had a subdivision. And that requires you to go to the planning board. And then there was one that we got, and it had the C or D variants which must go with the zoning board. So yes, uh, thank you for reminding me uh, about, uh, about the, 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 one of the good reasons to, to pass this. Uh, the, the concern I have is that the zoning board is generally busier than the planning board, and that if you make it one board, now we're gonna have to double the meetings for that one board. So, um, you know, personally, um, you, you kind of sold me on a, a point with the, with the bouncing applications. Uh, so, so, so. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Lisa Byrne, along with the set place. My question is if this goes through and we now have a land use, what happens to the current people that are in? Like, I have somebody that is currently. Going through zoning? Oh no, we wouldn't. I mean, we would make sure there's no applications before we decided. That's so, right, but sometimes everything gets pushed off. Ninety percent of your applications usually end right around October, maybe November the latest. That way, they end in December because once you jump to the following year, okay. Yeah, that's your last week, and then stuck in the. No, no, no. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? First call. Second call. Make a motion to close public. Okay. Motion from uh, Councilman Cordova, <coughs> second by Councilman of the Union. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, what is your pleasure? Make a motion to adopt. Motion by Councilman Ciola. Second. Second by Councilman Ballas. Councilman Ballas? Yes. Councilman Ciola? Yes. Councilman DeSantis? Abstain. Councilman of the Union? Yes. Councilman Richardson? Abstain. Yes. Thank 
And this is 2024 32. So there's 2024 32 in accordance with the Borough of South River, County Middle Test, State of New Jersey, Committee of the Borough Code, the Borough of South River, Select to Manage Chapter 295, entitled Subdivision and Site Plan Review, Stormwater Management. Wait before reading. Second. Motion by Council President Count uh, Krenzel, seconded by Councilwoman Dallas. All in favor? Aye. 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 Public hearing. Anyone from the uh, board? First call. Second call. Motion to close public. Second. Motion by Councilman Ciola, seconded by Councilman Krasinski. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Council discussion. What is your pleasure? Move the ordinance. Motion second. by Council President Krenzel, seconded by Councilman Ciola. Councilman Dallas? Yes. Councilman Ziela? Yes. Councilman Sanchez? Abstain. Councilman Damien? Yes. Councilman Shinsky? Yes. Council President Campbell? Yes. Listen 2024 33. Ordinance 2023 33. Ordinance to Borough of South River, County Middlesex, State of New Jersey. Committee of the Borough Code, the Borough of South River, Selection Manage Chapter 72, entitled Public Safety Department Health. Wait before reading. Second. Motion by Councilman President Krenzel, second by Councilwoman Dallas. All in favor? All right. All right. Open the floor to public. First call. Second call. Motion to close public. Motion by Councilman uh, Ciola. Second. Second by Councilman Chesky. All in favor? All right. All right. Council discussion. What is your pleasure? Move the uh, move motion to adopt. Motion by Councilman Ciola. Second. Second by Councilman Krasinski. Council Morales? Yes. Council Ciela? Yes. Council DeSantis? Abstain. <coughs> yes. Council Bertensky? Yes. Council President Campbell? Yes. Melissa 2024 34. Ordinance 2024 34, in order to the Borough of South River, County Middlesex, State of New Jersey, amending the Borough Code, the Borough of South River, select to amend Chapter 193, entitled the Opposing Chapter. Okay, motion waiting for read. Second. Motion by Councilman Ciela, second by Senator Councilman Cavino. All in favor? Aye. All right. Opening up to the public. First call. Oh. Uh, Andrew, so this is the parking lot of uh, Fleer and West District, right? Yes. Is there a problem with people parking there? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Probably people parking? At the night, not during the day. Yeah. At night. Not even during the day. Parking problems out there? Yeah. Really? Because I heard that there's no parking problems out there. You think it might have something to do with some of the uh, development that's been approved that was approved without parking? No? Not possible. I mean, you know, we've got like a lot of downtown stuff that's been approved. That I don't know parking, so I'm just wondering. If there's parking problem, there's parking lot. Parking in the borough parking lot, not for borough business. No, I mean, they shouldn't. Just, you know, how do we get there? Maybe, maybe we jumped the gun on stuff and didn't really think it through. And now we're kind of weakening it. Maybe the next turnout and we're going to see. But that's just my comment. Thanks. Anyone else on the topic? First call, second call. Motion to close public. Second. Motion by Councilman Ciola. Motion uh, seconded by Councilman Kaczynski. All in favor? All right. All right. Uh, Council discussion. What's your, what's your uh, motion? Motion. Motion, by, motion by Councilwoman Dallas, seconded by Councilman Ciola. Councilman Bell? Yes. Councilman Ziela? Yes. Councilman DeSantis? Abstain. Councilman Damien? Yes. Councilman Bertensky? Yes. Councilman Campbell? Yes. Melissa, 2024 35. Order 2024 35, in order to the Borough of South River, County Middlesex, State of New Jersey, and then the Borough of the Borough of South River, Collection Chapter 300, Title 3, Full Title. Wait before reading. Second. Motion by Council President Krenzel, second by Council Woman Ballas. All in favor? Aye. Public hearing. First call. Second call. Motion for the public. Oh, God. Sorry. This, 37. 
35. 35. 35. 35. 35. Oh, I'm, I'm jumping ahead, sorry. Sorry, just come off the second call. Motion by the CEO, the Mr. Uh, Councilman Siona, second by Councilwoman Ballas. All in favor? All right. Aye. Council discussion. Move the ordinance. Motion by Council President. Sorry. Second. Trenzel, seconded by Councilman Nadine. Councilman Ballas? Councilman Siona? Yes. 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 First reading. Alyssa, 2024 37. Alyssa, 2024 37. Alyssa, the Borough of South River, County Middlesex, State of New Jersey, amending the Borough Code of the Borough of South River, so as to amend Chapter 183 and Title B. Mayor, I move that the Council pass Ordinance 2024 37 on its first reading by title only, and the clerk be authorized to publish the same. As required by law with the second reading of public hearing to be held on September the 9th, 2024, by video conference via Zoom or in the council chambers of the Criminal Justice Building, 61 Main Street, South River, New Jersey. Thank you. Motion by Councilman Siola, second by Councilwoman Ballas. Councilman Ballas? Yes. Councilman Siola? Yes. Councilman Santos? Yes. Councilman Zinian? Yes. Councilman Yes. Councilman Yes. Let's go 2024 38. 2024 38. Order to the Borough of South River, County Middlesex, City of New Jersey, authorizing the sale of Block 151 of Lot 2.01. Mayor, move that the Council pass Ordinance 2024 38 on its first reading. By title only, the clerk be authorized to publish the same as required by law with a second reading and public hearing to be held at 7 p.m. on September the 9th, 2024, by video conference via Zoom or in the Council Chambers of the Criminal Justice Building, 61 Main Street, South River, New Jersey. Second. Motion by Councilman Siola, second by Councilman Nadine. Councilman Ballas? Yes. Councilman Siola? Yes. Councilman DeSantis? Yes. Councilman Nadine? Yes. Councilman Santos? 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 Yes. Mayor, I move that the council pass ordinance 2024-39 on its first reading by title only. The clerk be authorized to publish the same as required by law with the second reading and public hearing to be held on September 9, 2024, by video conference via Zoom, we're in the Council Chambers of the Criminal Justice Building, 61 Main Street, South River, New Jersey. Second. Motion by Councilman Siola. Second is by Councilwoman Ballas. Councilman Ballas? Yes. Councilman Siola? Yes. Councilman Santos? Yes. Councilman Nadine? Yes. Councilman Yes. 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 We'll be opening it up to reports. Bruce? Thank you. The first item is the 2023 local aid, 2024 local aid, there's a resolution on your agenda awarding that contract. The next is the 2025 local aid, we submitted an application waiting to get back. Uh, the, uh, also on your agenda is, is authorization for us to do the design for the grant that we got for the local transportation project. And the substation work is continuing on the testing. Anything for uh, Bruce? Thank you, Bruce. Joe? There's two items. Uh, number one, you have a resolution for the purchase of turnout gear on the state contract. Uh, this is through a firefighter grant the borough received. And another resolution hiring a part time employee in the office. That's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Public Works. Yes. yes. Uh, we are now. Uh, providing online scheduling for bulk. So, uh, you can go to the Carol <coughs> website or Recycle Coach on the app on your phone. You go to the uh, Recycling and Garbage. You click on that. That will take you to another page. You hit Bulk Pickup. Fill out the information. Submit it. And you get a confirmation email. So we're trying to make things easier. Residents still have a you know issue or any problems they could call, we'll help them through it, and you could still call for a bulk also. And one other thing, uh, Monday, September 2nd, will be closed. There'll be no yard pickup on that day. It's on. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Anything for uh, Kate? Uh, just so everyone is aware, uh, between the Department of Public Works and uh, Traffic Safety, we have been going around town, and I know a lot of people have been uh, bringing up a discussion about this, where we've been yellowing out a lot of curves, a lot of corners, uh, doing a lot of walkways. It's more about safety than anything else, uh, especially when it comes down to you coming around the bend, and people think that it's safe to park on that bend, and you don't see the blind spot that's coming down the road, especially when it comes down the road. So, to all the residents, this is for your safety. This is why the Department of Public Works and Traffic Safety is doing this as we speak. And they're going to continue doing just that. Dave, thank you and thank your staff. Deputy Chief? I'm getting there. I do have, um, I was remiss in giving you as well as the Council the laws. So, I do have this uh, with regards to the traffic calming, specifically the speed humps uh, uh, for you to review. Um, the second thing is, is I will echo what you said. It's exactly what we're, we're looking to do is to increase uh, the safety in town. Um, one of the things is when you're approaching an intersection, the ability to visually see left and right, whether it be a, a pedicyclist, a pedestrian, um, a lot of these motorized vehicles are out there now. We don't want to have any fatalities. So where it may be a little bit inconvenient uh, to park, where you're used to be able to park, but probably not really because it's going to be near a stop sign. Um, our target is to keep people alive. So I think that we got to give a little bit, maybe walk a little bit further to make sure that we don't have any uh, additional fatalities out there. I'd um, like to thank also the Public Works. They're very quick to respond and help us out with this endeavor. Uh, National Line Out is, uh, everybody's wondering what we're doing with that tomorrow. The Chief uh, really enjoys uh, this event, really enjoys being involved with the community, and he's hoping that the weather's going to cooperate with us tomorrow. So he's, Kind of holding off. I know that there's been neighboring municipalities that have canceled, unfortunately. Um, we've had vendors calling us all day long, and we don't want to pull the pen on this yet. So we're trying to wait until tomorrow, um, at which point in time um, we would put out a nixle to advise the community whether or not we're going to be building this event. The final thing with regard to traffic safety public roadways are exactly public roadways. So in front of residents' house, that is not your own private parking spot. And for some odd reason, people feel that when they decide to deploy traffic control devices without the authority to do so, specifically a road cone in front of their house to save their spot, that is illegal. You, a resident does not have the authority to implement a traffic control device. So what we're going to ask, and we put this out on Nixle, is for the residents to cooperate with us and understand that it is a public road. So if there's a vehicle parked in front of your house, I realize if you feel it's suspicious, that's what we are for. Please call us, we'll come out there, we'll check it out. But if your neighbor decides to park there every day and you don't like that your neighbor's parking there, I get that that might upset you. There's nothing illegal with that. What is illegal is when people decide to put garbage cans out when they're not supposed to be out, when they implement literally road cones and try to save these uh, parking spots for their own. We get complaints from the other neighbors because why can't I park where those road cones are? You guys put those there and we're finding this to be more and more um, so what we're asking for is the cooperation of the town pull your phones in because we don't want to have to move forward and take law enforcement action that's the last thing we want to do so it's advising you that it's not your own private parking spot you don't have the authority to put a phone in if there is a traffic related issue a parking related issue if it's a neighbor problem call us that's what we're there for uh, chief tenant again always says call 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 i'm going to reiterate that we don't live where you live. We don't know your exact area around your house as well as you do. We know the town, but we might not know that car has been there. Um, please call us. Please call us so that we can respond and we can help out and address your concerns. Possibly we can explain what the law is. Possibly we'll have to tow a car out of the way. Maybe it's a neighbor issue. Maybe we have to direct you to code enforcement. But call us. We're kind of like the, the hub on the wheel and we'll get you to the right spot. Um, the other thing is, is we have to report it. Uh, I have reported 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I just comes in on my, um, my bro issued cell phone. And there are some things on there where I, I think the residents want immediate action, um, but it's not viewed by uh, everyone in the town. If it's an emergency, report it is not for an emergency. So if it's a domestic dispute, if it's some sort of a crime in progress, don't get on your computer and report it to the borough on the computer and expect the police to show up. That's not going to happen. A 
Okay, that's for when you would want anyone from the borough to respond on Monday through Friday, general working hours, eight to four. Okay, so I just wanted to put that out to the community. Please use the forum, it works well. We address things. I know we work um, with the, the borough administrator to, to and also um, Mr. Soros to get things done. But again, that's not an emergency forum. If you need the police there right now, 911 2311 does. Yes, ma'am. I know you put all the homes up there when the school is in the yard. Right. The schools. Are they going to get picked up? So, one of the things I'm that, seeing them get tossed. They should be picked up. I actually directed uh, the traffic safety division to pick them up. If they haven't been picked up yet, I'll have a conversation they with them tomorrow. Over, they're getting thrown on people's lawns. Yeah, I, I know that they, that, that's why they I asked. stick on the corner of Farmington and <coughs> I don't know what that is. Where is it? It's like a cone with a stick in it. We make them a turn from David to North Farmington, right by the football <coughs> field uh, entrance. So, I don't know who put that there, but that's, I'll have to take a look I think that's still there. Um, one of the things we did is obviously people don't want to ride, drive into road cones or park on top of them, so we put them there to assist with um, during the school year. Um, yeah, but that, I, that they're there, I don't, I don't have an answer there's for still you. still some there. Okay. Yeah, I don't have an answer for you other than if they're directly be picked up. If they fail to do that, we'll get on it tomorrow. Probably use it for national item. Um, <laughs> the other things that we're looking into is uh, some of these non parking areas in town. And the city of New Brunswick has, um, if you've seen, they're kind of like a facility. <coughs> About so, three and a half, four feet tall that are installed. We would have to work with Mr. Soros to see how this is going to work out with the city of New Brunswick. They, they love them. Um, but I don't know how that's going to impact what they do. So, some of the things that we want to do to help control traffic, there's unintended outcomes when we implement these devices that we may not know. So, there's a lot of research that has to be conducted. Obviously, an expense is an issue too. And then everybody's going to want them. <laughs> so once we implement it somewhere, the whole town is going to want to. So we have to be very selective when we um, look at putting these devices. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Andrew. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alyssa. Ten minutes, Mayor. Mark. Mayor, thank you. A couple of updates on the projects: uh, the repair on the Wave Street sewer has been completed. The road was repaired. Water main project on Morningside should be done either by the end of this week or the beginning of next week. The Tall Yard pumping station is in full operation. The um, new chemical treatment in the water treatment plant uh, is in the testing uh, phase. We intend to, as soon as the testing proves positive, to get it in possibly by the end of the month. And the last thing is we uh, purchase the replacement for the pedestrian crossings at um, OG Way and Whitehead Avenue. Ten weeks delivery as soon as we get them in. The electric department is going to install that. Um, on resolutions, uh, 255, we're hiring a per diem to cover the building department. Um, she's the previous secretary and retired to cover when the uh, President, secretary is out on vacation, sick time, or whatever. Uh, 257, awarding a contract, uh, that's the Morningside project. 258 is the resolution uh, authorizing the turnout here as Mr. Zanga talked on a grant. And 259, um, the uh, State Police Office of Emergency Management has uh, completely changed their emergency action plan format. Um, the last one we were able to do when the code enforcement officer was a part-time employee, she's now a full-time code enforcement officer. I don't have the time as the OEM coordinator to do it, so we're hiring a consultant to do the report for us. That's it. Anything for it? Uh, Councilman Ciola. Um, Couple things, just uh, like to thank again the DPW for the great job they do around town servicing the roads, sanitation, everything. Our electric department, by far, um, they're always out doing maintenance on our lines, as you can see from other towns that have lost power over the last month or so. And um, our electric guys have been right on top of all of it, and they're doing a fantastic job. I just want to thank him again for all the help they did at the Summit Firehouse. Age, please pass the word to him. 
Council Member Bells. Here's another PPW again. Um, uh, if I were to I'd like to thank you for the cleaning of the letters and all the light bulbs that you changed for them. We want to tell you and get back and thank you a lot. Appreciate that. The other is uh, the South Carolina Food Bank is still um, continuing their annual school supply drive through August 17th. Uh, most, needed, most needed items are pretty much what you would get to school with pencils, binders, filler paper, spiral notebooks, composition pads, uh, scissors, glue, glue sticks, crayons. These will be distributed through the um, food bank to the needy families in town. The drop-off locations are Corpus Christi Church in the bin located by the entrance to the church. Holy Trinity Episcopal Church, the drop off is in the church office. And the South River Food Bank has a bucket located outside the doorway during their list of drop off times Tuesday, 8 30 a.m. to 10 a.m. and then again Tuesday night, 5 30 p.m. to 6 30 p.m. Wednesday is 9 to 12 and Saturday is noon to 2. So for everything we do with school kids, that, that really can be great. And that's all. Thank you, Councilman Duzina. <clears throat> uh, the Board of Ed update, the new preschool and the new athletic field are in progress. There will be a second neighborhood watch meeting sometime in the fall. More information will follow when we know more about that, but there will be one. The Shade Tree will be handling out anti-littering campaign signs at their table tomorrow night at National Night Out. Rec Committee. Fall and baseball softball. All teams travel practices will start August 19th. Please refer to Civic Rec for days and eight pages. The fall 2024 statistics. Competitive cheerleading, 66 participants registered. 33 will participate in local competitions. 33 will participate in local and travel competition. The locations are Ocean City, Maryland, Atlantic City, New Jersey, Tampa, Florida, Pop Warner football and cheerleading, 91 participants registered, 27 will participate in cheer program, 17 participants in under nine, 19 participants in under 11, 12 participants in under 13, and 16 participants in flag football. And um, tomorrow is, uh, I mean, not tomorrow, I'm sorry, uh, the fireworks in Luau show. That's why we're wearing the <coughs> shirts. This, this wasn't a coincidence, they're real good. Um, to support the August 16th at 6 p.m., the Luau show and fireworks. Um, the, there'll be local vendors. The fireworks will start around 9 p.m., and that should be a fun time for the barrel. So, anyone, again, that's August 16th at 6 p.m. For Luau and our fireworks. And that's all I have in there. <clears throat> Councilman Kaczynski. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, well, the Office on Aging. Uh, some of the people have been asking me about the water meter replacement. Some people are doubtful about it and everything. Uh, generally, the people who come to your residence and everything will have ID. But if you look out in the street, there will be a van marked with meter tech on it, which is a private utility company that the township has contracted to replace the water meters. Um, like Councilman Dezinia said, tomorrow is National Night Out. We're all looking forward to that. And of course, on the 16th, we have our Luau, or end of summer event. Um, and we have a carnival, a carnival mingle coming up at the end of the month with the office on each at the Human Services Building. And it's a $5 fee for to offset whatever you're going to eat. <laughs> and, uh, and of course, this Friday, too, we also have the Middlesex County Fair in East Brunson. So just so everyone is aware, you have the kids out and everything like that, too. And with that, that's all I have there. Thank you. Councilman DeSantis, I know you have nothing to report. I have a couple of things. <laughs> um, so just to echo Hank on the Pop Warner football, I am involved with Pop Warner. We're specifically looking for players for the 12 and 13U football team. That number is a little late right now, so we really need to push the enrollment. So if you know anyone wants to go up there and try it out, we're up at the high school practice field where the trailer is that says Rams, right by Denny Stadium, or what used to be, uh, every night, so come on up. Um, I also want to call out uh, one of our residents, Julius Rosado. 
Uh, he's an incredible baseball player in our town. He's going to be an incoming senior. Um, he's, uh, he's got a full ride to Rutgers next year. He recently participated in the uh, PG National Showcase in Arizona. He had a 426 home, foot home run with a wood bat, which if anyone understands, that's, that's pretty incredible. And he was recently picked to the area code games. It's the top 240 players in the country in high school, and he's going to be going and playing. And the most important thing, representing South River, and his name goes up on the screen, hometown Southern New Jersey, Southern High School, and I think it's important that we recognize some of the greatness we have right here. So, so yeah, thank you. Council President. Uh, Councilman Wachowski said uh, we're progressing with the water meters uh, call to make an appointment. I know you cannot get out of it. So yeah. uh, the sooner the better. It is painless, not to worry. They don't go rummaging through the house. Uh, they change it, and they're out like in 20 minutes flat. Uh, in September, I'll be calling a public, public works and utilities committee meeting to review the plans for the final third of the year. Uh, that's all I've got for now. Thank you. We have a whole mind to the end. I'm going to open it to the public. We have 10 minutes. Uh, please say your name and address. Good evening again. Richard Byrne, 11 to set place. Um, first, as chair of the Environmental Commission and uh, Green Team, uh, I would like to speak in support of Ordinance 37 for the additional stop signs and also any measure that improves traffic safety, pedestrian safety, uh, speed humps. Uh, right, that everybody on the commission is in support of that. So now let me speak as on my own behalf as an insufferable know it all. Uh, if you recall, last year I spoke about the state budget and how our late 18th district legislators, uh, certainly Stan in particular, um, of all the things that the borough of South River needs help with, he got a $75,000 for soccer field repair at Hills Pond. Hmm, the priorities don't seem right here. Uh, some people might say, you have to ask for it. Well, nobody asked for the 75000 That was a constituent's call that he and Mira helped him suss out the details for. You know, I personally know four people who have called to Bernie Stanley's office complaining about water problems in town. And instead of him coming to a borough council meeting and saying, hi, I, I can help you, uh, what can we do to help you? We referred it to the DEP who did water testing and determined that the discolored water is not dangerous and hence the DEP is not taking any action. So, you know, I had, uh, in Hamilton, we had State Senator Don Adiego, who, when she was running, promised to attend no less than two Governing body meetings in every town in the district, and she kept the promise that, that she showed up more in Hamilton because her mother lived there. Um, so um, I looked at this year's state budget and see what, what the 18th legislators did for for the 18 district towns, and there was one town that got guess the amount zero. Guess which town got zero? Yes. The borough of South River. I'll say these ones right to the last because it's pretty ridiculous. Uh, but so Edison got, and last year it was election year, so they were more free flowing with the money. And this year it's a total of 3.7. So next year they're, they're getting elected again, so the money probably will flow better. <coughs> Edison got $250,000 for the Jewish Community Center of Middlesex County, very worthy organization. They also got $200,000 for the Thomas Edison Center at Mount Park. Very nice little museum there, plus the, the tower. <coughs> um, I highly recommend if you have time to head all the way and look at that. But, hmm, yeah, we have water problems and they're getting their museum. And that's a private foundation, right? that's not owned by the state. Highland Park, no, Highland Park did the best this year. They got a million dollars for the South Third Avenue Public Plaza. Town Square kind of thing? I don't know. But yeah, a cool million. And then in addition to that, they got 
$250,000 for garbage truck replacement. <coughs> Remember, we, we got we garbage trucks a couple of years and we, uh, we have bond for them. So, um, next is Metuchen. Metuchen got, Metuchen is the Westfield of Middlesex County, right? It's not a poor town. Um, they got $500,000 for fire truck replacement. We just ordered another fire truck that we had the bond for. It. So, 18 really came through for a touch on that. And then they also got $250,000 for the Colonial Cemetery Restoration and Repairs. I mean, we have a cemetery that's funded by a trust fund that was set up when it was established in 1860 something. Um, you know, these things can run out of money. Um, it is a problem throughout the state, but so they got that. Milltown, oh, they got $200,000 for fire truck replacement. Okay, South Plainfield uh, got uh, $500,000 for municipal building capital improvements, which is what they got a million dollars last year for. Now that, that's, Devin lives in South Plainfield, so he's, he's not, you know, like, it's a Republican town, but he's taking care of some of that. So. Now, the, the last one was East Brunswick. So East Brunswick got $53,000, an odd amount, but it's for the United Desi of New Jersey, uh, an Indian American uh, community association. And then here, here's <coughs> the most important thing in Middlesex County, District 18, for them to smash the piggy bank and toss the money at. East Brunswick's getting $500,000 for Crystal Springs Water Park improvements. <coughs> That's a revenue generating facility. They sell subscriptions to it. <laughs> we need help with this, this money for our water problems, right? So, and then I think just four that are outside of District 18 that are interesting. Um, the South Amboy Business District Parking Lot Acquisition and Development. Oh, wait, wait, hey, that. We could use some parking improvements in this town. Um, the South Amboy Veterans Memorial Plaza, $50,000. The Nork Alliance is getting $250,000 for hire, buy, live to attract people, to move into town, get jobs, live in the town. <coughs> and then Cranberry Township, which interestingly, Cranberry Township has a higher per capita income than Princeton. Cranberry's richer than Princeton, and they're getting $275,000 for uh, the Village Park Revitalization to fix that kind of park. Um, and then the city of Camden, here, here we go, is getting $2.5 million for water main refurbishment initiative. Wow, that's something we need in this town here. So um, now, Middlesex County is getting a total of $40 million for parks and recreation infrastructure, economic development projects, the education infrastructure, and just Middlesex County Improvement Authority, $8.5 million. So the county, which essentially is supposed to do improvements in the county, uh, is getting this big pile of money out of it. So um, perhaps that we have to ask for. Because, you know, but so, you know, I mean, I can call Sterling Stanley up and say, I want this, but I, I think it would carry some more weight. Next year, and, and you can't start too soon with these guys. They're running for the election next year. Like, somebody you know, corner him in his office and say, look, we need, we need a hand with this. Why don't you come out to a borough council meeting and talk to us about you know, how you can help? You know, I, you have to ask, you shouldn't have to ask, um, I don't know, maybe I'll run for assembly next year, and then you won't have to ask if I'm assembly. So um, that's, you know, I remember you, you like the booze and cookers from our place. We put our water project out to every elected official. <laughs> yeah. The only elected official that came back to us was Cory Booker who put $21 million request into the state budget. Okay. Yeah, only, I mean, the only one after I even reached out to the, uh, uh, yeah. this, the, the Christmas tree money is from the property tax relief fund. It's a piggy bank they smash each year and just toss money out on their own whims. It's not a program, it's not a requirements, it's 
it's just their own pork barrel spending, and you know uh, they have underperformed for the borough of South River. And uh, that's the that's thank you. Much. Surprise, surprise. <clears throat> Anyone else from the public? I got a question. Richard says, Survey Stanley, South River Blue Chill 104 over Turnpike. Has anybody from the council invited him to a council meeting or asked him to appear? I haven't done that. I've actually spoken to him. Okay. Uh, has he got back to you about appearing to one? He's several times he said he would come by, but he hasn't. Okay. But I have, I have spoken to him. Several okay, times. so you have talked to him. I, I know spoken. just because, you know, they're with the county, they are. I've, I've, I've even gone out with Okay, so you okay, so you have reached out to them. Just just curious because people say the county doesn't come to town, they do come to town. I'm a, I've met the majority of the whole county myself. So okay, just curious. Thank you. Anyone else in the public? Jim Hutchins at 38 Virginia Street. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, first off, congratulations, Councilman Santos. Welcome aboard. You look good back there. Where's your Hawaiian shirt? Um, yeah. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> first off, uh, Ordinance 202437 about the Virginia Street study. Um, I didn't see the write up on that. Does that include everything that was part of the study that's going to be put into there? To that order. This is the four way stop. This is four way stop. Sorry. The striping. The striping will be done we, at the same time. Okay. Um, and certainly, once the study is done, as far as speed humps, speed bumps, etc., um, I'm sure everybody in the Virginia Street location would say, let's get some speed humps out there on Virginia Street. Um, again, once the study is done, we realize what in fact is associated with uh, uh, the outcome of that. And I would appreciate it if uh, once the stop signs go in, we have some uh, some officers out there because uh, we might be able to make more money than the dispensaries <laughs> writing tickets. Um, just a recommendation. Um, consent resolution two fifty seven, the uh, water main project. Um, I just had a question on that, and through your chair, I'd like to ask Mr. Koch a question. Um, we had a little discussion outside, and from my understanding, the letter that went to the school, I guess it went to the school board or whoever was associated with that, that project, um, part of that was that, um, according to the maps, there was a main there, and that uh, your recommendation was to dig test a test pit. It went to, as I recall, it went to Frenchman's for oil pool. Okay. Okay. I just want to say one thing from a water utility standpoint. When you have a project um, where you're questioning uh, the utility hookup, whether it's electric, whether it's water, gas, etc., um, you always want to take a look at your facilities. Now, depending upon the electric delivery system, you give it a look overhead, um, see what's going on. And as Mr. Koch's statement was back to the particular uh, uh, firm or whatever it was associated with this, on the water utility side, because the water mains are below ground, you dig what you call a test pit. You verify what the facilities are underneath the ground. Um, from my understanding, the test pit was done at the time they were attempting to do the tap. That's that's way too late. You want to verify that as part of the project up front. Because when, in fact, you dig a test pit, you say, okay, there's the main. You verify that the main is there. Then you know what you're dealing with. You can verify everything and uh, take the project forward. So whomever, in fact, was dealing with this letter that you provided to them, I think they failed miserably on the responsibility. Because, again, the map said there was a main there, and now there is no main there. And now we have to install a main. It's not cheap. If a test pit would have been done up front, you would have known that. And maybe you could have scheduled it rather, I'm not sure if it's an emergency type of thing, but I'm sure the school board 
is pushing for this so that in fact they can get schools open in due time. But I think this is a, an absolute failure on someone's part. Uh, first off, the map said that the main was there, it wasn't. Second off, it was the test fit stuff. Um, that's a colossal failure. That's a colossal failure. And um, I want to find out more about this. With all due respect, they did flow testing, and the flow was adequate. Okay, it was adequate. So they assumed. You know what you say when they assume? Absolutely. That's why they tested. Um, again, the company I work for, Middlesex, if, if anybody would came to us and said, okay, we're putting in a X facility, whatever it happened to be, the first thing we would do is take a test it and verify that we had the facility. That's in the utility side of things, that's common sense. So uh, I think somebody or someone or some entity needs to be held responsible for this. Um, as far as tax base and so forth, that shouldn't hit the taxpayers of the borough of South River. That's Jim Hutchison's opinion. Um, cannabis issue. Um, I, I appreciate the uh, presentation by the gentleman tonight, and I certainly understand that. We're always looking for some situations. Certainly, um, cannabis is something that's, you know, it's a hot topic, I think. And the dispensaries are, are, can be a moneymaker for the towns, etc. cetera. Um, I just want to say one thing. Um, whether you like them, whether you don't like them, there was a referendum and the public voted no. Um, and I know you cited another referendum but the most recent referendum was no. Let me say also, now you know it's not this body, but there was a referendum for the Board of Education. That said no, and there's construction going on. Um, if there's referendums sent out and we ask for the public's opinion and the public says no, and you do it anyway, why are we wasting the money on referendums? Why are we wasting the public's time? I think it's wrong. And if my, uh, just a quick question, Mr. CFO, about how many taxpayers do we have in town? How many tax bills are sent out? 5,000. 5,000. I was guessing about 6,000. Like 6,000. Okay. That's too far. So I know the statement by the one gentleman was that we could see a 2% savings, or 2% revenue source of about $120,000. At 6,000 taxpayers, that's 20 bucks a year. Um, I'm not flying to put dispensaries in for maybe 25 bucks a year on my tax bill. I can tell you that one. And uh, just one last thing when you look at your tax bill, I do appreciate when it shows the breakdown of my taxes, when it shows municipal tax, school tax, and county tax. Just look at that because your school tax is the biggest portion of the bill. 50%. And again, it's, I understand we need to have that for everybody, but the Hutchinsons don't have any kids in school right now. <laughs> have a great evening, folks. Anyone else from the public? Thanks. Thanks, Chris. So, first of all, Second call. Motion to close public. Motion by Councilman Sinema, second by Councilwoman Dallas. All right. Prior appointments um, for the planning board regards uh, Councilman John Frost. I am going to be appointing uh, Councilman DeSantis. Our first planning board meeting will be August 20th. We have to wear a seat. Mayor, just want to mention the Zoom. Well. Yes, it is. It's a Zoom meeting. Right now. There is no application for it. Alyssa, okay. uh, consent resolutions 2024. Sorry,
251, the Women's Group authorizing the Banners Maple Auction. 252, approval of a special events permit to the Portuguese Club to be held on September 1st, 2024. 253, authorizing the Borough Clerk to waive a special event permit to Steve for St. Mary's. 254, approval of a special event permit to St. Mary's to be held on September 8th, 2024. 255, authorizing the appointment of Joanne Calvo to part time administrative assistant. 256, awarding contract to CME Associates for professional services to claim 24 improvements to various roadways. 257, awarding contract to BMW Construction for extension of water mains. 258, resolution authorizing the purchase of turnout gear for the Center for Fire Department. 259, appointing continuity operations group to provide consultant services for OEM. 260, appointment of Melissa Zerbino as part time clerical for office on aging. 261, authorizing the execution of a contract for the sale of real estate. 262, authorizing the execution of a redevelopment agreement with Brothers, Brothers Builders PJ LLC. 263, authorized city utility refunds. 264, resolution amending council liaison appointments. 265, award contract to Jazz Construction Incorporated for various roadway improvements and parks. 266, accept July 8, 2024, regular and executive session minutes. 267, authorizing the local claims list. 268, appointment to the Office on Aging Department. 269, authorizing the recognition of funds of pay for payment to the custodian of the school money. 270, awarding contract to CME Associates for professional services related to improvements to the Jackson Park. 271, authorizing the execution of an agreement with Rutgers University Police Department. Motion to accept approve, I should say. Motion by Councilman Ciola. Second. Second by Councilman Virginia. Councilman Dallas. Yes, with an abstention to 266. Councilman Ciola. Yes, with the abstention to 258 and 267, 24-02184, uh, 02185, 02186. 02187, 02188, and 01321. Councilman Santos? Yes, with an abstention to 266 and 267. Councilman Virginia? Yes. Councilman Vicente? Yes. Council President Brandon? Yes. Council Brown, covering body comments. Councilman Santos? Councilman uh, First off, I'd like to thank all of our uh, public service workers, our police, uh, DPW, especially DPW, and also they have a to give to about their bulk pickups, uh, which please go and visit our website to find out a little bit more about the online scheduling program. And in regards, if you don't have a computer and everything to go online, you can still call. Uh, Congratulations to Melissa for her appointment to the Office on Aging. And also, happy birthday, Mrs. Scott, 101 years old. With that, that's all I have here. Thank you. Councilman Zena. Um, yes, also, thank you to the South River Police Department and the Public Works for what they do. And so, hey, match. This is the last year I'm up here, and it's been a Can't pleasure practice. working with you. Um, and tomorrow is National Night Out, as long as the weather uh, cooperates, but that'll be a fun time. Councilman Dallas? Yes, I'd also like to welcome Matt to the council. I've known him a long time now, right? <laughs> I look forward to working with you and your new ideas and your input, and I know that we're all here for this to have any questions. Weather committee, we'll see you tomorrow night at National Night Out. And then again, the white work on the 16th. Bring your grass skirts, and whatever else you want to do, you can win, right? Right, you're going to do that. Yeah, yeah. Councilman Ciola, thank you. Um, Matt, welcome to the board. Look uh, forward to working with you. Um, good group you got here, so we we'll, we'll all work together. Um, just want to wish everybody, uh, hopefully, a nice night tomorrow night. Uh, hopefully the weather does hold. We have the 16th is our fireworks, end of our summer. 
And I uh, just want to wish everybody a happy Labor Day. We will not meet until afterwards. That's it. Thank you. Council President. Matt, I uh, know you'll be a good addition here, so welcome to the board. Um, I always push good things happening in South River, National Night Out, fireworks. Don't forget September 11th is also coming up. Um, careful, Debbie is also coming uh, towards the end of this week. They don't know at this point. Today is Monday, sometime Friday into Saturday. Lots of rain, wind. And pray for the people down south, they're really getting hammered. Uh, keep an eye on the weather for this week. Happy Labor Day to everybody. Our next meeting will be September the 9th. Thank you. Um, welcome, Councilman DeSantis. We had a good beginning to a council meeting. I also like to recognize a, a friend of mine I just met recently, Mayor Daniel Francisco from English Town. Welcome for being here. Pleasure, thanks for having me. Pleasure to have. Um, Middlesex County Fire Marshals, I want to thank them. Um, what I've learned in the last past um, month and a half, two months, is that the state decided back in July 29th, 2024, that they were they were not going to pick up the borough's life hazard uh, registration bill. So they did come forward and paid it, which uh, added to about uh, $1,542. So thank you to the Middlesex County Sheriff's, uh, Middlesex County Fire Marshals for doing so. Uh, speed humps was a topic today. We are about safety. This is a big deal for this town. So please understand why we are doing what we are doing. Uh, we are going to be reaching out to a lot of uh, contractors or our state developer. Sorry, uh, um, outfits to find out exactly what this is going to cost us, so I know the chief is going to be on top of it. I also want to thank Ashna from the Girl Scouts. Uh, she has done in the last past two weekends a remarkable job at the community garden, uh, rehabilitating it, uh, putting out uh, uh, planners and uh, whatnot. So she continues to do that every single weekend. National Night Out, as we have heard, good luck. Hopefully, we have it tomorrow night. Um, August 16th, as you all know, is a luau. Um, yes, we are all, well, most of us are all wearing <laughs> shirts. Um, and the last, uh, I want to also bring this to our attention. This is, today's council meeting was a uh, very, very uh, productive meeting. And the reason I say that is we had, for the last past 20 years, we had a vacant building, a vacant piece of property. It went from Lafayette Chevrolet to the rooming house to nails, and whatever you may be want to call it, it's been there. Today, we are one step away from putting a shovel on the ground. After 10 years, that our first redevelopment is going to come to our town. The three stories, 17 apartments, uh, Siabrish, which is going to be a specialty market, uh, cafe, wine room, and more. This is just the opening path to South River. I can't thank the developers and for that matter the council for supporting us. We have one meeting away from making a shovel a reality. With that said, I want to thank everyone for uh, participating and being here. And do I have an adjournment? Votes to adjourn. Second. Motion by Councilman Ciola, second by Councilman Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye.